The Hermetic Order of the Silver Blade by Paul Pearson Although sounding like a more ceremonial magic group, the Hermetic Order of the Silver Blade is far closer to traditional witchcraft than most would imagine. Led by the High Priestess Barbara Brundelani, the group worked with a veterable melting pot of magical and pagan traditions. Barbara first caught media attention in the late 1970s, early 1980s, when she opened her shop, The Witchery, in New Moston on the outskirts of Manchester. The photo accompanying is a local newspaper item showing her as striking and dramatic, long black hair, dark piercing eyes, and dressed in black, the stereotypical image of a media witch. I first encountered Barbara whilst researching a story for a magazine. The article was intended to expose her as a charlatan, but when I visited the shop and met her, all preconceived ideas were swept away. I found myself invited to her house the following week. It was the beginning of a friendship that was to last to this day. Shortly after I had joined Barbara's group, which at that point had no name, the media began to take an interest. Inadvertently, Barbara became something of a celebrity. Many people believed she was seeking publicity, but Barbara found the media's attention to be an intrusion. There was also a mixed reaction from other pagans. Not wishing to be connected with Alexandrian or Gardinarian witches, the group adopted a name, jokingly at first, that would distance her from the better known traditions. Thus the name struck, and the Hermetic Order of the Silver Blade was born. The group was centred around Barbara, and she was a strong leader. Although many people approached the group for admittance, Barbara was very selective. New Age airheads were out. So, too, were those looking for ritualistic kicks. This was a serious and practical group. Openness and free thinking were encouraged, and blind obedience was frowned upon. As far as the magical tradition goes, Barbara remained practical. Witchcraft is like cooking, really, she said in one of the interviews. I go to my temple and think, what can I do with these ingredients? Mixing intuitive magic with corresponding ideas from Crowley, traditional witchcraft and even voodoo, Barbara was able to find a workable blend of traditions suited to her magic. Like the witch of old, she took whatever tools she had available and made them to work for her. The results were often astonishing. There were no set rituals in the HOSB, but the elements utilised from both her intuitive mind and the ideas of others gave a basic framework of rituals and magical acts. Barbara's irrelevant sense of humour made her unpopular with some witches, yet respected by others. Most of her humour was saved for the media, but affectionate names for the god and goddess, the gaffer and the matron, remained when working out rituals. Although receiving both positive and negative reactions, her ideas were taken seriously by some. On one occasion, Leon Dickens, Gardinarian high priest and close friend of Patricia Crowther, visited and suggested creating a pagan church together, an idea that Barbara had been pondering for some time. Barbara was flattered by the invitation, but eventually she declined. Ironically, structural damage to her home, Raven's Leech, later pushed Barbara into finding a suitable new home, and the ideal place was an unused church that appeared on the market, which she hoped would serve as a temple and a workshop, as well as her new home for her family. The spectre of the media rose its head again. Immediately there was negative responses from both pagans and, to a greater degree for more obvious reasons, Christians. The pagan community attacked her for what was, in their opinion, a sensationalist stunt devised to upset the Christian factions of society. In reality, the plan was far more practical. The cost and impracticabilities of stabilizing her house suggested that it would be easier and cheaper to just buy the church. The reasoning was, of course, ignored, and the media bandwagon latched onto the false idea of Barbara battling against the church. Her efforts to buy the property were thwarted due to the publicity generated, and eventually she was forced to abandon the idea. Of course, the idea of a pagan temple-slash-workshop is now popular amongst pagans. Following the demise of her idea, Barbara came more wary of media attention and slowly slipped out of the limelight to pursue her work more privately. However, her groundbreaking public work remains as a little-known milestone in pagan history.
Towards the end of 2000, I returned to New Moston to speak with her about the hermetic order of the Silver Blade. The group, for all intent and purpose, no longer existed in the same form. Although I no longer lived in the area and was rarely able to visit, Barbara still regarded me as a core member. She has fond memories of the group's heyday and still retains the enthusiasm and ideology. The energies that surrounded the group still remain, and the enigmatic and enthusiastic character still radiates from her. Shortly after my visit, she retreated to Italy and, like the witch of old, lived a hermit-like existence outside of normal society.